When we speak about energy, one cannot proceed without referring to COP28, which recently concluded at Dubai. For the first time, the world has agreed to move away from coal, oil and natural gas that are the principal causes of global warming. The 198 parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change agreed on a text that called for a transition away from fossil fuels in energy systems in a just, orderly and equitable manner. Fact remains, reducing dependence on fossil fuels will ultimately depend on making them uncompetitive. A welcome step was the mobilization of an unprecedented 85 billion US dollars a fund in funding for the climate change. India rightfully urged leaders at the COP28 to implement the Paris Agreement through the global stock take process while maintaining focus on equity and climate justice. It is not simply the case that providers of fossil fuel resources will lose and providers of green resources will win. Coming to the India's growth story, the quarter July to September 23 was phenomenal. The Indian economy grew by a roaring 7.6%, which has been the highest growth rate for any major economy in a quarter. This number becomes even more significant when we see it in terms of relative terms, where the third and fourth largest economies, namely Japan and Germany, contracted, and even within emerging economies were not very impressive. Vietnam grew by 5.3%, Thailand by just 0.8% and India is continuously maintaining its momentum of being the fastest growing economy. On the back of this fast growth, in the last eight years, India has steadily moved up the ranks from being the 10th largest economy in 2014 to the 5th largest in 2022. Today, Indian economy is already US 3.4 trillion in size and it is a matter of time when we'll hit the 5 trillion milestone. While India is transforming to becoming a developed economy, it is also experiencing the energy revolution, which entails decarbonization of the energy sector. This puts India uniquely on a double transition path, quite alike what the big developed economies are going to experience. This certainly is a challenge developed economies and even China have fueled their economic progress on the reliable, convenient, fossil fuel-based energy sources. The high energy density of fossil fuels forms the basis for this predominance. Addressing the nation on the Independence Day on 15th August 21, the Honorable Prime Minister announced that the National Green Hydrogen Mission, and he wants India as a dream to be a green hydrogen hub. Subsequently, in January 23, the Union Cabinet approved the National Green Hydrogen Mission wherein production of 5 million tons of green hydrogen annually by 2030 and developing India as an export hub has been envisaged. To reduce the dependence on inputs of fossil fuels while maintaining the energy requirements of the country, we strive to become a major player in the green hydrogen business. India is among the select few countries that have come out as a national level commitment and strategy for green hydrogen production. We must realize biofuels and green hydrogen are at the center of India's energy transition pathway to help it achieve the ambitious net zero emissions by 2070. Share of the renewables, including biofuels, in India's energy mix is going to increase to over 36% by 2050 from the present share of only 12%. While it is remarkable that this rise in share of renewables is not just rejigging the energy mix, but it will be in most developed countries, the overall energy requirements are expected to stagnate and even fall over the next long term. So India's push on green energy industry, we are going for leadership in this position, and I am sure that with the ambitious plans that we have laid out, the green energy is not just a slogan, but we will be achieving it in the days to come. The establishment of green manufacturing base would not only be advantageous from the economic growth point of view, but will have a significant social impact through employment generation. India's ambitious goal to develop a solar manufacturing base is projected to contribute to 1 lakh jobs by 2026. To conclude, 
I am confident that the green energy revolution will add to the mix of advantageous structural elements for India, like its favorable demographics, rising urbanization, adept microeconomic stewardship by the Indian government in expanding a digital economy, a thriving system of eco startups, and a concerted policy drive to expand the manufacturing and the infrastructure base of the country. At the same time, to ensure that energy transition is just and orderly and does not become an impediment for growth, India will continue to take nuanced and balanced approach towards the growth and stability of its fossil fuel industries. Given the rapid and anticipated growth in India's energy needs, expected to double by 2050, the fastest globally, relying solely on green energy, will no doubt would be growing very rapidly, would be insufficient to meet the surging energy demand. Acknowledging the necessity for stable and reliable fossil fuels will remain a big part of the energy mix, at least for the next couple of decades. And I am sure whatever chances we have, whatever dream we have taken upon ourselves to become a green economy will be fulfilled.